Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, basketball fans of all ages, welcome back into all of Rams High School for game eight of eight. This is the men's championship game. It's Cardinal Spellman, it's Brockton High, the first matchup ever of these two teams. As always, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. Join alongside my broadcast partner, big game Miles Jackson. Miles, you've been at some historical games. I don't think any comes close to the first matchup of these two crosstown rivals. Yep, and the great thing about it is for the uh, tournament championship, so it shouldn't make it extra exciting. Brockton and Spellman matching up in a way we have seen no other team match up with the size of Brockton. And because of that, Brockton is starting their two three-point shooters. A travel called on Jalen Lee and Spellman's crowd erupts. The two three-point shooters of Brockton, Jerice the Assassin, Harris, and Marcus Azor. Yeah, you got some shooters for this Brockton team. And rebounders too, so it'll be interesting to see how Spellman reacts to this um, top-notch competition that they're facing this evening. Admar Jamarillo, the senior guard out of Brockton. Now Mike Spencer, the senior out of Abington, to Craig Faria. Faria, of course, given a technical foul the other night, and he has the first points in this game. Spellman two, Brockton nothing. Out of play off of Spellman. Brockton retains possession. Talk to both head coaches before this game. It's going to come down to matchup. Can Brockton hang with the 19 kids on the Spellman roster? Can Spellman hang with the size and shooting ability of the boxers as Azor driving baseline lays it up and in? Yeah, that was a smart play by Azor. He saw the opening and took it right to the basket. Easy two. John Murillo for three. He is no good over the backboard out of play. Brockton takes over. Abu Kaba up to Tejan Glenn Darty. Jalen Lee for three is good. Nice. Brockton has their first lead. Yeah, nice shot by Jalen Lee. He was open and he took it. Worth mentioning as John Marillo drives in off the glass and in. It's going to be a shootout. Spellman is wearing their visiting maroon jerseys, gold and white trim, as Azor hits another three, or that was Actually, Lee. Lee, yep. Eight to four, Brockton on top of Spellman. John Marillo back the other way, blocked by Glenn Darty. Brockton wearing their home white jerseys, black striped down the side, red trim around the black numbers. Abu Kaba all the way in, count it in, one for Abu Kaba. Yeah, ni nice decision by Abu Kaba. He was going to shoot it, then saw the opening, took it right to the hole, right to the hole, and was um, contact on the body by the um, Spellman defender. Head coach Mike Perry calling a timeout. It is 10-4. Brockton on top by six. Yeah, right now it looks like Spellman's trying to run with Brockton. When they come down with their offense on half court, they're wasting no time going to the basket, especially the guard there for uh, Spellman. So they're trying to run with Brockton, but they're going to find out, if not already, that don't try to run with Brockton. Slow the game down. Try to keep the ball in, in your hands. Take some of the time off the clock. Then when you get the good shot, take the shot. But if you try to get in a running game with this Brockton boxer team, you, you, you're liable to lose. Every member of the Brockton boxers is healthy. Jose Montero Jr. returning tonight. <laughs> from uh, concussion protocol. Five Spellman players on the floor. Smith McRae, Craig Faria, John Murillo, Mike Spencer. And I believe Will Cornett. Spencer has the tough assignment of the night. He said, yeah, you're on school vacation. But that didn't mean anything because now he's responsible for guarding the 6'6", Tejan Glenn Darty. 
as well as 6'7", Eldon Terry. John Murillo Faria for three is no good. Rebound to Jerese Harris. Harris all the way in to Kaba is laying up is good. Yeah, good decision by Harris. He drove all the way into the paint, dished it off at the last moment for an easy lay-in by his teammate. Spencer for three. No good. Kaba tipping the rebound. It ultimately finds Juris Harris. Harris slowing up. Faria has it. Loose on the floor. Harris, uh, Faria has it. John Marillo is blocked by Abu Kaba. And Faria following Azor. Wow. What a defensive play by the big man, Abu Kaba. The, the guard for uh, Spellman had no idea what was coming at him when he put that shot up. Kaba now fouled by Mike Spencer. 446, or rather it's Will Corden, his second personal third on Spellman. 446 to go in the first quarter, it's 13 to four. Boxers on top, Glenn Darty think, thinking dunk. Smith McCray goes down. Glenn Darty called for the push. There is a capacity crowd here, standing room only tickets. We've hit such a fact that the gym is full. There are kids sitting in the windows. Wow. Upstairs at all of Rames High School. Abu Kaba comes up with a loose ball up to Jerez Harris. And Azor up and in. Yeah, Azor, nice job running without the basketball. And he was fed for an easy two. Good defense by the uh, boxers. John Murillo working his way in. Floater is good. Wow, that John Murillo, he's quick. Senior. And he's out of Brockton. That's his hometown. Abu Kaba with the early candidate for MVP of the game. Azor, floater, no good. Glenn Darty didn't know it wasn't going in or he would have had it. Spencer, offensive foul on Mike Spencer. Jerry's Harris planting his feet. Yeah, nice call there by the referee. Harris did a nice job of, like you said, planting his feet, waiting for the offensive uh, commitment. Azor to Abu Kaba. Kaba to Jalen Lee, driving baseline to Jerese Harris for three. The assassin is good. Mm. Nice job by Glenn Doherty. He was covered underneath, dished it outside. And Harris hit the shot. Admar John Marillo driving inside, stopping, trying to pop from the free throw line is blocked away. Azor to Glenn Darty. Glenn Darty thinking dunk outside to Harris for three is good. Well, Harris is hot. He just hit from the opposite side. Now he just hit from that side. So is he, that's what they need. Somebody hit that outside shot, spread out this defense. They're going to have to come out there and cover him. Jerese Harris with back-to-back -back threes for Brockton and the Boxers lead it 21-6. Just under three minutes to go in the first quarter. Well, right now, Connell Spellman has no answer for Brockton's outside shooting as well as their inside layups. Right now, Brockton's got their A game on the court right now, and Connell Spellman's going to have to bring theirs. Otherwise, this is not going to be much of a game. This is the final game of the Oliver Ames tournament. Claiming third place right before this game with the Oliver Ames Tigers dominating South Boston. Last night, the girls' slate wrapped up. The boxers falling to Oliver Ames and Walpole winning the title against the Needham Rockets. A little bit later on, we will be talking to Annalicia Fernandez and Elizabeth Williams, two of the stars of the Brockton team. The entire Lady Boxer squad is here tonight 
Watching this classic Smith McRae counted and one for Tyrone Smith McRae. A nice spin move by Tyrone Smith McRae. Another Brockton native. Rob McGuire in for Cornyn. Glenn Darty ripping down the wow. rebound over Mike Spencer, who is of equal height. Now, this is Navon Reed. Reed working his way inside off the glass. No good. Glenn Darty tipping the rebound out to Abu Kaba. Kaba to Harris for Dang. three, and it's good! Jarese Harris, the assassin, is on fire. Yeah, he's definitely got his hoster on. Guns are blazing. Faria down low gets his own rebound with the abnormal amount of space under the basket. Yeah, that's good, good on balance on his part. Spencer pump fakes, and Spencer fouled by Glenn Darty. Or Harris called for the push. Yeah, Harris was playing tough D. That was his first foul. Jose Montero Jr. into the game for Azor. And Samuel Darius into the game for Jerese Harris. Spencer catch and shoot, no good. Glenn Darty with the rebound. I don't agree with the decision of Coach Bob Bowen to take out the hot hand in Jerese the Assassin Harris. A dunk attempt for Abu Kaba trying to light the crowd, and you can see the reaction on both sides. Yeah, everybody held their breath for a second. Melbourne's yeah. fans kind of winced. They didn't want that one to go in. Brockton's fans halfway out of their seats. <laughs> yeah, they're just waiting for that first dunk of the evening. Faria getting his own rebound, laying it up no good, followed by Kaba. Yvonne Reed called for the hit. Rather, Darius. Eldon Terry is going to come back into the game. You see him standing next to Tejon Glenn Darty. Scary sight. I was on the court before this game. Now, I'm 5'6 miles. What the heck are they feeding these kids? Yeah, it's very you get interesting. 6'7, seven, 6'8. Six, Montero Jr. is pass intercepted by Faria. Faria to McGuire down low as the ref collides with John Marillo. Now Spencer, Spencer working his way in, fouled by Reed. It is 24 to 10. Brockton up by 14 over their cross town rivals, the Cardinals Spellman Cardinals. Mike Spencer, good on his first attempt. Smith McCray is out, number 14. Mike Marshall, the sophomore out of Weymouth, is in. Spencer, two or two at the line. Abu Kaba in for Jose Montero, Jr. Jr., the quarterback of the football team. This pass over to Reed is complete. Reed driving inside, lost it momentarily, off the glass and in. Wow. Nice job by Reed. Excellent ball control in the paint. Went around defenders like it was no problem. McGuire across to Spencer. Spencer, as Eldon Terry gets in Spencer's face and Reed comes away with the ball. Spencer is hurt. Mike Spencer is holding his face still down on the Cardinals end of the court. Now John Marillo. John Marillo all the way in. in a oh, how you oh, come on. Marillo, junior. Come on. He had the position. Wow. Tough call for Montero there. Ed, can we just talk about the height that Admar John Marillo got? His knees were up by 
Jose Montero Jr.'s head. Yeah, this guy's got springs in his legs. You could tell right off once his game started, once he drove to the basket a few times, he can really leap up in the air. 26-15, 30 seconds to go, no shot clock. Navon Reed. Reed inside for Eldon Terry. Terry off the glass and in. Nice Ten job by seconds. Terry to use that backboard. Spencer down low in the face of Terry. Terry comes up with a block. Brockton able to prevent any Spellman points as the quarter expires. It is 28 to 15. Brockton on top of Spellman in the first matchup these two teams have ever had. Yeah, um, very interesting first quarter. Harris with the hot hand for um, Brockton hitting some devastating three-pointers. Known as the assassin, he's doing his job right now out there in the first quarter to build up this 13-point uh, lead. Miles Brockton starting off tremendously. Eventually, at one point up by, I think, 14. Spellman has started to claw their way back into it. Yeah, they, they've started to, but they got a long way to go. They got to somehow defend Brockton and, and stop some of them shots because they can't go shot for shot at this moment because how far the, how far behind they are. To prove how important and exciting this game is promising to be, now former Brockton boxer Alex Gennaros is in attendance, the sophomore of Tabor Academy. Yeah, you can see she's still got a lot of friends, her um, former basketball team, and got her fans here because she was definitely an explosive uh, player for the uh, Lady Boxers. Thirteen point edge for the boxers. Spellman with the ball. John Marillo to Spencer. Spencer pump fakes. John Marillo with a little lane. Gives it back to Spencer. Now a three for Marshall. No good. The board to Jose Montero to Eldon Terry. Terry thinking dunk! That one-handed reverse slam for Eldon Terry! Wow. I I'm, I'm applauding on that one while well, comes around from the basket and just dunks it in. Got the crowd going. It's just not fair. <laughs> Smith McCray for three is no good. Cabo with the rebound for Brockton. Darius and Terry went back up to the rim. And now Kaba thinking dunk. Terry loses a handle on the rebound. 15 point edge, it's 30 to 15. Brockton on top, Miles. This thing has been blown off the rails real quick. Smith McCray too, no good. Darius with the rebound. See, when, when Brockton misses a shot, Connell Spellman has to capitalize and somehow make their shot. A charge against Jose Montero Jr. Now that was similar play on the other end. That referee who just made that call has to be consistent. He's not right now. He's not being consistent on both ends of the court. Remains 30 to 15. Brockton doubling up the Cardinals in a packed house here at Oliver Ames High School on a cold evening. Cold evening. Standing room only, kids are up on the second floor of the gym, looking in from the windows. That's how hot this ticket is. Smith McCray off the glass and in reverse layup. Sonny Okinlola into the game. Azor to Okinlola. Okinlola, he's like the enforcer for this team. Arsenal Louis Charles to Navon Reed. Reed for Oak and Lola, back to Reed. Reed thought about the three. Sends it down low. Loose ball, Spellman comes up with it. Now John Marillo against Azor. John Marillo driving baseline, sends it out to 
eventually Spencer. Spencer's three is no good. Oak and Lola on contested rebound. Up to Azor. Glenn Darty's gonna come back into the game for Brockton. Oak and Lola for three, no good. The big man likes to shoot the three ball. Yes, he does. Smith McRae all the way in, loses it. Loose ball. Picked up by Spellman, John Morello for three, it's good. John Morello hitting the big shot, cut this lead down to 10 points. Azor. Nice dish yeah. off to the big man. Eldon Terry takes advantage and dunks it very nicely. But nice drive by Azor to dish it off at the last moment. Spencer, Spencer to John Marilla. 4.46 to go. It's 32 to 20. Very exciting matchup here at Oliver Rams. Spencer all the way in. Went up to the rim. And his layup is good. Oak and Lola. Down low. And Spellman comes away with the loose ball. McGuire. Watch out, Newby. Watch out! Newby's getting in the action here. As athletic as Newby is, he's not one of the players. <laughs> Do not try passing him the ball. Eldon Terry. Quick breather on the Brockton bench. John Marillo slowing up, setting up the Spellman offense. McGuire working his way in, his layup off the glass and in. Ooh, nice drive by McGuire. Spellman into a single digit deficit, 32 to 24, halfway through the second. John Marillo in alone, up to the rim, a layup finger roll is good. Spellman trying, starting to make this a basketball game. The crowd's getting back into it for the Cardinals. Louis Charles down low for Glenn Darty, and he couldn't get quite high enough. Now he does, and he misses the dunk, and Spellman comes away with it. Hey, that's a time I'm sure Coach Bone would wish Darty would just lay it up easily. A three for Marshall, no good. Spencer with the offensive rebound. Under the big roll, coming in, one for Mike Spencer. Yeoman effort for Spencer, and he worked hard for that shot. Eldon Terry and Abu Kaba back into the game for the boxers. Okamola Glendari, breather on the bench. Now Spencer trying to make it a one possession game. Does just that. 32 to 29. With 310 to go in the first half. Miles, the roof has officially been blown off of this, this gym. We're only in the second quarter. We're wearing headphones. We now know that that is partly due to ear protection. It is very loud in this gym. Yes, it is. Darius into the game, he replaces Charles. Azor with springs in his legs, grabbing yeah. the pass over John Marillo. Yeah, he needed the springs in his legs on that one because... Darius three, no good. Lee has his shot blocked by Spencer. Spencer got up high for that one. Good defense by the Cardinals. They really poured on the defense in the last three or four minutes of this ball game. Whistle stoppage. It's gonna be a conference 
And the officials are rather the ref's gonna go talk to Mike Spencer. Spencer pleading a case. Basically, referees tell him to knock it off. Rob McGuire with the loose ball. Has it! Oh! oh, oh. Now Abu Kaba has it picked off by Smith McRae to McGuire. McGuire off the glass. No good. Puck back up by McRae and in. Wow. It's a one point ball game. Thirty-two to tw thirty-one to the score. Abu Kaba off the glass and in. Wow, that was too easy. He saw the opening, took it, and went up uncontested. Admar Jamarillo pump fake to Spencer. He pump fakes now. Step back in the face of Eldon Terry driving baseline. Goes up, counted in one for Mike Spencer as Eldon Terry is frustrated with the call. Miles, it is a one-point ball game. If Mike Spencer remains perfect at the charity stripe, we can officially kiss all of our eardrums goodbye. And he does just that, all tied up 34-34. Spellman back from a 15-point deficit Sonny Okinola spinning, shooting good for two. Nice turnaround by the big man in the paint. Rob McGuire in the corner. Jalen Lee working on him. Over to Spencer. Spencer trying to get around Okinola unsuccessful to John Marillo. John Marillo driving baseline. Has it taken away by Wow, nice D. Nice defense. Okinola. Where's the, the foul? Oh my God, there was contact when Okinola went up and there was no call. Abu Kaba in and he is fouled before the shot. Yeah, Azo is going to go up. Nope, they're going to bring it outside in underneath the basket. Call was before the shot. Azor two, no good. Smith McRae with the rebound to Marshall Spencer coming away with the loose ball. Now overhead intercepted by Abu Kaba. And a foul. Yeah, there was body contact McGuire. by number 14 for Spellman. Marshall called for the push that puts Brockton in a one and one shooting situation. 49.8 seconds to go in the first half. It's 36 to 34. Brockton up by two and now three as Kaba is good on his first attempt. Miles, it has been a long time that we've seen a game as wild as this one's been. Two possession game, Brockton up by 438 to 34 with 45 seconds to go in the first half. John Marillo quarterbacking the Cardinal offense, working his way inside, losing it out of play. Yeah, what you have here this evening, such an exciting game. You got two teams from the same city playing at a very high intensity level here at Oliver Ames. And as you know, the crowd is into it. So that's why it's at a fever pitch and we're in the second quarter. About a three second difference between shot clock and game clock. Jalen Lee off the glass, no good. Shot clock off, Brockton with an offensive rebound. Abu Kaba out to Azor. Azor with some good handles working his way inside. Oh! Marcus Azor with a little how do you do? Little Show me what you got. 
and Brockton takes a six-point lead into halftime. It's 40 to 34 miles. This game has been wild. Yeah, and again, like I said, it's wild because you got both teams from Brockton, high intensity level. Uh, Connell Spellman's done a nice job to get back in this basketball game with some tenacious defense. Uh, Brockton um, leveled off on their scoring, but uh, right now they do have a six-point lead. Miles, it's 40 to 34. Spellman, as you mentioned, clawing their way back into this one from 15 down early. It's all about matchups, and Spellman has proven that they can hang with the big, bad Brockton boxers. Yeah, well, what, one key player underneath for the Spellman team is that Mike Spencer. He's been really playing tough, um, frustrating Glenn Darty, and also frustrating the other big guy, El El Eldon Ter um, Terry, um, when he goes down low. So he's been really playing tough. It is 40 to 34 at halftime in the title game of the Olive Rams Holiday Tournament, game eight of eight. The Brockton Boxers leading the Cardinal Spellman Cardinals in the first matchup of these two teams in the history of men's basketball. We're gonna step aside, take a short break, hopefully get our heart rates down a little bit so we can bring you second half action right after this. Patriotism. It inspires passionate debate. It's worn like a badge of honor with good reason. Because it means love and devotion for one's country. But what really makes up this country of ours? It's the people. To love America is to love all Americans. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love. Love beyond age, sexuality, disability, race, religion, and other labels. Because love has no labels. Listen. All it took was someone who would insist that I just try. Suddenly everything was turned around because they judge you. You tell them, I don't need this. No one is going to understand. Unless they've been through it, how can they? Then one day you realize, You feel so hopeless. I need help. I need help. You feel so hopeless. Then one day you realize... Unless they've been through it, how can they understand? I don't need this. No one's going to judge you. Suddenly everything was turned around because they insist that I just try. All it took was someone who would just... Listen. Gentlemen, boys and girls, basketball fans of all ages, welcome back into Oliver Ames High School for second half action between the Cardinal Spellman Cardinals and your Brockton Boxers. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. Joined alongside my broadcast partner, big game Miles Jackson, is Admar John Marillo right off the bat with a dunk. If you are just joining us, Spellman has clawed their way back to tie it at one point from 15 points down in the championship game of the Olive Rams Holiday Tournament. We have a special guest to start this second half. It is none other than, than number 33, a senior on the Brockton Lady Boxers, Annalicia Fernandez. Anna, this has been a wild game. All of the Lady Boxers are here. First of all, give us your thoughts on this game. Well, this game is kind of crazy. Uh, it's kind of something I expected. Everyone, like, going at it, basically. 
And to see the comeback from Spellman, it's incredible. Abu Kaba with the steal. Working his way in. Oh, there the you go, in. Nice job. He made that look easy against the big guy. So, Anna, let's talk Lady Boxers basketball. You've got a new coach in Chris Connolly. There's a new freshman in JV coach. You've been around this program for now four years. Yep. Your thoughts on a fairly strong start. You guys are three and two, but undefeated at one point three and zero. Oh. Talk about the Lady Boxers season and what it's like really changing regimes as Jerese Harris for three. It's good. Go. Jerese with 12 points from beyond the arc. Good job, Reese. As the Boxers reclaim a nine point lead. Yeah, Harris picked up where he left off in that first half. So any of your thoughts on the Lady Boxers change of regimes from April Dingwell and Dave Ray over to Chris Connolly. Uh, Hillary Filkins, now the freshman coach, one of my favorite teachers at Brockton High. <laughs> Fun fact. <laughs> well, it's a new team, obviously, and we're all friends because we've all, between me, Jade Wynn, and Elizabeth, we've all played together since we were young. Harris off the glass. Good job, Harris! And we kind of know each other, so we know how to play together. It's just everyone else. We're all friends, and we have that connection off the court, and we need to bring it onto the court offensively because I think our defense is getting pretty well. And our offensively, these past two games, it's kind of shown how we've grown as a team and what we need to do to get better. Spencer off the glass and in. It is 47 to 38, rocking up. Let's go, boys! By nine, Marcus Azor with it to Jalen Lee. Lee with some space over to Jerese Harris. John Murillo tipped it. Is Harris able to recover? Azor now working his way in. Oh, to Kaba. Kaba thinking Ooh. slam and box. Nice, and goes in. So, Annalisa, you mentioned it's a new team. You lost three big pieces from last year Jelani Jackson, Brianna Santos and the sophomore who was poised to really take over this team and lead the charge to the tournament in Alex Gennaro. Let's talk about what that's like and trying to find some people to fill those shoes. Well, we definitely miss them. We definitely miss Alex. And But she's here tonight. She's she sitting is. She is. right next to us. She is. She's always a great supporter, and she's such a great friend, and she's an incredible ball player. I think and they figured out that we're talking about it. <laughs> Harris, three from the corner, oh. bad angle. It, oh my gosh. So there's an abnormal amount of space between the bottom of the net and Smith McRae counted in one for Tyrone Smith McRae. It's back to a nine point lead and Smith McRae could make it eight. So that where that three went wrong, there's an abnormal amount of space between the basket and where the out of bounds line is. And Jerese Harris was in that sweet spot in play, but behind the backboard. Smith McCray, no good on his free throw attempt. Eldon Terry, 6-7, up to Jerese Harris. Go Harris, Jerese. wide open three, way um, downtown, no good. Here you go, Marcus. Tipping the rebound, it bounces back out to Harris. Harris falling, and it's been a foul. Corny. out of play. It's going to be a basketball. I tell you, the referee missed that one. It was a foul there on Harris. It was a few fouls either way. Harris to inbound the ball. So, and Alicia, the boys' team is undefeated. They come into this game at 6 and 0. Oh, as Jalen Lee for three, no ah. good. Talk about the go, excitement move. of this team, of this boys' team around Brockton High. Well, I know each and every boy on this team, and they have incredible talent. And they all know each other, and they know how to play very well together. And seeing that on the court, it's so incredible to watch. It's ridiculous. And they all have great hustle. Kaba for three is good. There you go, bro. Yes, Spellman's going to have to defend that somehow. They can't leave any of our players open because all the players can shoot that outside shot. Well, the star so far from beyond the arc, Jerese the Assassin Harris with 12 points. Good on four of his five attempts from beyond the three-point line. It is 52 to 40, just about halfway through the third quarter. 
Andy, you guys have a long bus ride ahead of you oh tomorrow. You're going all the heck out to Holyoke. Yeah, that's going to be a long ride. Definitely sleeping on that ride. We Coach told us to bring a pillow and a blanket and everything. You guys are playing on New Year's Eve? Um, I don't think oh, no, so, no. no, you're playing. That's 30. the 30th tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. So you're going out to Holyoke, the team that normally comes to Staff Gymnasium at Brockton High. We don't know much about the Holyoke Knights, but it's one of those weird matchups. It happens every year. Why? Nobody knows. Nobody wants to drive two and a half hours. Holyoke is just northwest of UMass Amherst. Yes. So it is way the heck out there. It's near Longmeadow. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Holyoke, they had um, this one player that they had beaten us by one point I think I believe it was last year or two years ago and they had this one player she was very big tall I think she plays at Florida State now she's she was really good and she was basically their whole whole team so hopefully this year we'll be able to play our best and hopefully get that W Spencer for three is good it's back to a single digit lead for Brockton 52 to 43 with 340 left in the third quarter the boxers and the Cardinal Spellman Cardinals. Jalen Lee working his way inside, drawing the block. That is Corning down low. That is his fourth personal foul. So, Annalicia, what if I were to tell you this is the first matchup between Cardinal Spellman and Brockton ever? Wait, really? Ever. I had no idea. I know, I know this was the matchup everyone's been waiting to see, but I didn't know it was actually the first ever. That's ridiculous. Spellman winning the title in Division Three back in 2013. Brockton, we're hoping this changes this year, has not won a basketball championship since 1985. Wow. I believe our boys could take it. I really do. Admar John Marillo to Tyrone Smith McRae, the Brockton to Brockton connection. John Marillo down low, lost the handle. Smith McRae, short jumper, no good. Eldon Terry, the 6 on, 7, Jaylen. and Jalen Lee's in alone. Jalen Lee, punch oh. slam, and he missed it. Now John Marillo with the Hail Mary on the other end, laying it up, no good. Lee to Kaba, Abu Kaba, in for Terry. Terry spinning, trying to get to the rim, foul. Good post move, LD. Yeah, it was a nice post move by the big man. Didn't make the shot, but he did get fouled. 53-43. And Alicia, we have not seen a team this big in probably the history of Brockton High for the, the boys' side. You've got 6-7 Eldon Terry, 6-6 Tejan Glendardi. You've got a handful of guys that are 6-3. You've got the starting quarterback of the football team, Junior Montero. Glad he's back. There is a lot of size and talent on this team. Yeah. Meanwhile, for Spellman, Admar Jamarillo, the lone holdout for the Cardinals since they won that title. He was only a freshman back in those days. Craig Faria, who got the tech against South Boston in the first game of this tournament. Spencer down low. Spencer going up strong to the basket. Yeah, nice Indeed. job. Nice job getting under the basket, then forcing his way under, underneath. Therese Harris losing it. John Marillo picking up the loose ball. Wow, he just kind of tossed. Uh, Faria thought one-handed slam, and he was blocked. Wow. Cobb on the other side. And Rob yeah. McGuire calls for the a foul. Yeah, the reason he was called for the foul is because he was moving. There was contact. I thought it could have been close to an offense, but offensive foul, but because the defender was moving, they gave it to the offensive player. The assassin, Jerese Harris, in for Navon Reed. Reed in for Eldon Terry to Reed. Oh, where's the foul? Reed, where is middle. the foul? Spilling into the end boards as Smith McRae hits a short jumper on wow. the other side. It is 54 to 47. This game, flat out exciting. Yeah. Let's go, Junior. Montero for Reed out of play. And John Marillo with the pressure and a timeout. Whistle. 
Eldon Terry off the floor. Brockton going with Sonny Oak and Lola, the big man in the paint. John Marilla working his way in, laying it up and in. Yeah, he's a beast going to the basket. Montero now loses it, picks it up, and it's going to be a backcourt or a foul, I believe, on John Marillo. He's called for the push. Yeah. So, Anna, your half fan, half Brockton boxer basketball family tonight. This game is wild. Definitely. Spellman's clawed their way back from 15 down in the towards the end of the first quarter. It's now a five-point lead for the Brockton Boxers. As Okinola can't keep this one in play. Coach Bob Bowen with an athletic move on the Brockton bench <laughs> to grab it. Talk about why this game has been so wild and exciting. It's because the Spellman boys, like AJ, number four, is very close with, I'm pretty sure, with almost all the boys on the team. And they've all played together. Oh, oh, oh my God! Montero. Read for three. Oh, no good. Nice move, Junior. Need to get an instant replay on that one. AJ, uh, Junior Montero, excuse me, going behind the back, breaking the ankles of one of the poor Cardinals. Wide open. Yeah. Montero is wide open underneath. Cobb inside, loses the handle. It goes off of Spencer's foot to Craig Faria with a minute to go in the third quarter. Spencer pump fakes for three, works his way inside to the rim and a block from Navon Reed. Yeah, nice job by Reed denying Spencer the, the shot. 46.1 seconds in the third quarter. It's a still a five point lead for the boxers. 54 to 49, Junior Montero getting around John Marillo again. Ah. Junior Montero fouled on his way up. Nice move by Montero, spun in the paint and went, to, went with the finger roll and it just kicked back out of the rim. At the line for two shots is Junior Montero. First game back from concussion protocol. McCray back in. He replaces Craig Faria, the sophomore out of Brocken. Montero over to at the line. Spencer, an uncontested rebound. There is a six second difference between shot clock and game clock. AJ John Marillo to Spencer. Now to Smith McCray inside to the hoop and it's off the glass and in. Ooh, nice spin move. Got the ball quickly up in the air. Ten seconds to go. Junior Montero off to Navon Reed. Reed working his way in off the glass. Wow. And in it's with eight. two seconds left. That was a big time shot for you. Jumarillo half court looks good off the glass. No good. It is 56 to 51. A five point lead for the Brockton Boxers at the end of the third quarter. Miles, we'll start with you. Your thoughts on a back and forth third quarter? Yeah, a, a lot. Again, still a lot of electricity. Yet both teams are still playing very intense basketball, as you can see with five point um, boxer lead. But the boxers got to make this. They missed a lot of shots here in the third quarter, and and that has let Spellman stay close. And Alicia, a lot of excitement around this boxer boys basketball team course the soccer team coming off a state championship what would it mean to the high school to have a couple of trophies next to each other down between green and red that would mean a lot that would uh, oh my gosh I have no words for that I hope our boys I think our boys will take it very far and they play well together they're very intense they go for the ball they're on the floor I believe they got in they will take us far honestly at the end of the third quarter, we want to thank the cast and crew for bringing you the sights and sounds from an electric Olive Rames gym. On camera tonight, we have the prolific cinematographer Aaron Tebow, whose birthday is tomorrow. Wish him a happy birthday. Hit him up on Instagram. He's at 
I believe Mr. Tebow. We have Katya Andrade, the cousin of Jonathan Rodriguez and Daniel Andrade of the boxer soccer team. And we have the seven time award winning director and producer and Emmy nominated Nubi Rato, John Morillo missing a three, Junior Montero the uncontested rebound. And you are listening to the sultry sounds of big game Miles Jackson, myself the mad dog Matt Nelson, and for the third quarter, Annalicia Fernandez. My last question for you, Anna. There's been a lot of colleges at your games. <laughs> I think the first couple of home games, we counted nine of them in total. What's it like to be scouted that heavily? Now, you look surprised by that number. What's it like to be that that scouted by different colleges from all over the place? I didn't know there was nine, but wow, that's... I. It's very... I don't know. I don't want to say shocking because... I, I know I worked hard enough and I grew a lot and I've been taught from so many people how to play this game and I've learned so much and I love my team and they help me with it too so I don't do it by myself. I always help, help but I'm very thankful for everything that's happened to me and I'm thankful for my team. Reese so. Harris inside for Eldon Terry. Terry to the rim. Oh, there you go. In. Nice job. Spun around Spencer, the defender. Put it back on the opposite end, opposite side of the backboard. So that being said, what is your dream school? Forget about scholarships. If one school were to offer you a scholarship, who do you want it to come from? Wow. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I just, I have, I was offered um, one from St. Leo, Florida, because my mom. the class it in? Nice take. My mom was actually, she's moving down there, so they're D2, and I'm planning on sending them more videos of me, so hopefully I could probably go down there, but most of the schools looking at me are in Massachusetts, so I might plan on staying over here. Florida. I think you're just saying that because it's seven degrees outside right now. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> it is 60 to 52. We're going to rotate Annalicia Fernandez out for sophomore co-captain Elizabeth Williams as Jerice the Assassin Harris has a break on the bench. Azor for... Good hustle, Marcus. The football pass running... Almost right through the doors. Thank God they didn't <laughs> open to let the cold in. Yeah, it was great defense by the um, by on um, the boxes on Spencer on that last last defensive play. Rob McGuire to Mike Marshall and Alicia. Thank you. Thank for you for joining us. We're now going to be joined by sophomore <laughs> co-captain Elizabeth Williams. Azar stopping and popping for two is good. Back to job, a 10 point lead for the boxers. Yeah, nice job by Thanks Marcus. Thanks for having me, guys. Good luck. So, Elizabeth, let's start off with sophomore co captain of the Brockton Lady Boxers. What is that like? How did that happen? So, um, they voted me in as co captain at the beginning of the season um, because it's just because I got the girls together over the off season and just during tryouts was really a leader and was very vocal and um yeah pretty much so we'll start off with the same couple of questions we asked Annalicia okay. you lost a couple of big pieces from last year Jelani yeah. Jackson Brianna Santos and would have been a sophomore Alex Gennaros who went off to Tabor Academy What's it like trying to fill their shoes and point put up for all of the points that they accounted for every game? Um, it's very hard, especially because we have girls like in roles that they're not used to. Like me, I'm not really a point guard, but I have to fill that role now that we're down. So, um, but that just means we need to improve even more on our defense so that we can get those stops and get up the floor for offense. So this has been a wild game between Cardinal Spellman and Brockton High. AJ John Marillo all the way in off the glass and in. It's 62 to 56, a six point edge for the Brockton Boxers. Yeah, Reed's gonna have to protect that basketball a little bit more. So we're gonna drop a couple of fun facts on you. 
as Brockton calls a timeout. One word reactions. First bullet point. Cardinal Spellman is a Division Three school. I don't even know what to say to that. <laughs> that was more than one word. Well, wait, what am I supposed <laughs> to say? Like, just Do you believe that? Yeah, I believe that. You believe that. This is the first ever matchup between Brockton High and Cardinal Spellman. I don't believe that. It's true. It is? Yeah. First time. Um, never knew that. So, Brockton has not had a team this big in at least 30 years. Spellman won a title back in 2013. As we took you through that one back in Worcester, Brockton has not won a basketball title, men's or women's, since 1985. Insane. I don't know. That's the only thing. Because the school this size should probably be getting more titles. Well, you know, it, it's tough when you have a, um, the Catholic schools do a lot of drafting or yep. siphoning from Brockton. Matter of fact, Tabor we've got about Academy. four, yeah. <laughs> at least four players from Brockton that are on Cardinal Spellman High School. Yeah, yeah, You know, definitely. Kathy Memorial, mm -hmm. Severian, BC High, they all come to Brockton yeah. for that talent. Yeah. So we've got what I'm calling a regime change. Abu Kaba stopping and popping for two no good Smith McCray. Eldon Terry missing the dunk. Abu Kaba with the rebound. Kaba fouled on his way up. So we've got the regime change from April Dingwell, Dave Ray. We now have Chris Connolly and again, my favorite teacher at Brockton High School, Hillary Filkins down as the freshman coach. You only had one year under Coach Dingwell, but it's a dramatic shift really in strategy under Coach Connolly, what's it like changing regimes like that? Um, it's a little tough because it goes from one coaching style to another. But I actually played for um, Coach Connolly in AAU when I was younger. So I'm kind of used to the way he coaches, and but not all the girls are. So I think it's a little tough for them because he puts in more like, um, he puts in a lot of plays, a lot more plays. So it's really like a mental thing too. So I have to remember all that and yeah. Azor coming down with the rebound, regaining his footing up to Abu Kaba. Kaba for Navon Reed. Yeah, this is the fourth quarter with four minutes, 30 seconds left. They should use a little time off the clock on the half court offense. Kaba with a nice hesitation to get to the basket, laying it off the glass and in 10 point edge for Brockton, 66 to 56. So a lot of excitement and hype around this Brockton men's team. Of course, the soccer team winning the title this year. What would it be like if hypothetically there are two trophies sitting next to each other in the administration building? That would be awesome. That would be insane, but awesome. Because, um, yeah, Brockton doesn't win a total, like a lot of titles all the time. So it'd be good for, you know, in one year to win two for two big sports. So save for the soccer title this year, what if I told you Brockton has not won a team state championship since 2005? Insane. I don't, just crazy because like you'd think that like a school this size would just have so much talent, but I mean we do, but it's just hard to find those kids and put them in the right group together to get them all to work together towards a championship. The emphasis on team championship, of course, because Cole Wyman has gone back to back to yeah. back, three state, three straight state championships for the 102 pound wrestler under coach of the wrestling team, Deshaun Fentress. The wrestling team has had a tremendous run of success the last few years. So it's 67 to 56. Elizabeth, tell us why this game has been so wild, so back and forth and why Spellman has been able to hang around? Um, I think Spellman has been able to hang around because Brockton does play a lot, like a lot of bench players and they just have a bench, but sometimes it's just finding the right group to work together and see what, por what points can be scored. And Spellman just seems to be a very like cohesive unit and they all know how to play together. And I think Brockton is still trying to find that right fit of which groups. 
flying in out of nowhere off the glass and in it is 69 to 56. Three minutes and 15 seconds left as Faria works his way in. Reverse lamp is good. Nice shot there. He had to reverse, reverse the ball in, in, the, in his hands and put it up with his left. So with time winding down here, we want to thank Elizabeth Williams and of course Annalicia Fernandez for joining us courtside here for the men's title game between Cardinal Spellman and Brockton High. Elizabeth, thank you again for joining us. You're welcome. Excellent start to the season. We look forward to covering you guys throughout the season in what hopefully is a lengthy tournament run. Thank you for having me. Good luck. Back to game action, Abu Kaba for two Ooh. off the glass and in. Nice shot, clutch shot right there. 71 to 58. Brockton is pulling away up by 13. Admar Jamarillo trying to change that for three is no good. Yeah, with 2.39 left on the clock. The box is, it's their destiny to, well, it's up to them if they want to win this game. Right now, they can win this game. They just have to play tough defense still and beat. There you go. Glenn Darty. And protect the football. Glenn Darty need that shot. He just got back in, stayed out for a little while, was a, a little upset about his play, and he comes right in and gets a dunk to uh, extend the uh, boxer lead. Seventy-three to fifty-eight. Your score. Two twenty-one to go in a matchup that has absolutely lived up to all of the hype. This game is wild. It is sold out. Standing room only here at Oliver Ames. We've got a luxury box, top shelf to the far left of the camera shot that is filled with students. The entire Lady Boxers basketball team is in attendance. A huge Spellman fan base making the trip. On the floor for Brockton, it is Navon Reed, Marcus Azor, Abu Kaba, Jerese Harris, Tejan Glendardi. For the Cardinals, Rob McGuire about to inbound to Admar, John Marillo, Mike Spencer, Craig Faria, and number 15, Patrick Gilday. Mike Spencer has a little bit of a rest on the Spellman bench. Abu Kaba with the steal up to Azor. Azor flying in, short oh. jumper is good off the glass. Ooh, beautiful job, Azor switching, hand, switching hands with that ball. He felt the defense on him, and he was still able to make the basket. And a good steal by, I, be, I believe it was number, maybe 33, possibly with the steal. And, Brockton's transition game has been very good this evening. Coming down the basketball court with a steal or whatever, but they've done a nice job with their transition game this evening. Matt. Brockton is playing the clock game. Spellman, I believe, has chalked this one up as a loss. As Marcus Azor stopping and popping. Yes! Good! Yes! And that brings the crowd to their yes. feet. Azor showing he's got skills too. A jump ball called, or no, they're going to call a foul on Abu Kaba. As someone called the timeout. Timeout. Abu Kaba called a timeout when he had the ball on the floor. And the referee saw it, made the call. Good job by Abu Kaba to take that ball away from uh, Spellman. 53.8 seconds left. It is a 19 point edge for Brockton. 77 to 58. 
The Foxers in all likelihood will win the title here at the Oliver Rams Holiday Tournament. And I still cannot believe this is the first time these two teams have met. Well, you know, after such an exciting game, I'm sure this won't be the last time. What up? Have a, have a classic first game of every year. Marcelo Louis Charles off to Marquis Dos Santos. John Marillo all the way in. Counted in one for Admir John Marillo. Yeah, John Marillo. Excuse me, Marquis De Santos finding out how quick John Marillo is as his pocket was picked. And John Marillo makes the three point play. Rob McGuire to Craig Faria. Faria off the glass and in. It's 77 63, 30 seconds to go. There is a half second difference, shot clock and game clock. Jalen Lee with it. Let's recap the whole tournament real quick. First game a couple of days ago, it was the Brockton Boxers and the Walpole Rebels. Walpole getting the victory in that one, 62 31. Next up, it was the Olive Rams Tigers as Jalen Lee, last second three is good to make it. 80 to 63. The buzzer sounds so Olive Rams fell to the Needham Rockets. Then Cardinal, uh, yes, Cardinal Spellman beat South Boston. Brockton High beat Olive Rams last night. The Brockton Boxers fell to Olive Rams as Olive Rams claimed third place. And then it was Walpole getting the victory against Needham in the girls' title game earlier tonight. We saw Oliver Rams with a huge victory against South Boston, and this one has been a classic 79 to 63. Brockton High getting a victory in the first all Brockton matchup in the history of men's basketball. And and it it, it played out to the hype that it was being hyped at. Um, just great defense on both teams, but Brockton had a little bit it on the edge as far as the uh, rebounding. Their defense was a little bit better, but uh, Spellman gave Brockton some fits there during the whole game. It's just that Brockton played smarter, smarter ball that last fourth quarter to uh, get a comfortable lead to uh, take this uh, championship. Miles, you've got one game ball to give to each team. Who's got it? Well, I tell you, uh, as far as Cardinal Spellman, I give the game ball to Jam Jamello, number four, the senior guard. He did an extra job. Gave Brockton fits as far as Brockton goes. Gee, I'd have to give the uh, the game ball to uh, number 15, Abu Kaba. So I'm going to slightly disagree with that. I agree with Admar John Marillo. I'm going to give it to Jerese Harris with uh, a couple of big three-pointers. Five from beyond the arc in total. Again, the final score here, 79 to 63 miles. Your final thoughts on this game. Well, I say uh, you said uh, who was the uh, MVP? Harris? Definitely so. I forgot about Harris. He set the tempo for this um, Brockton High team in that first half, hitting some key three-pointers. He was on fire, came out in the second half, threw a few more in, but you're right. He was the one that set the tone for this Brockton offense. 79 to 63, your final score. Brockton High claiming the title in the Oliver Rams Holiday Tournament over their crosstown rivals, the Cardinal Spellman Cardinals. For everyone here at Brockton Community Access, our camera crew, the seven-time award-winning director and producer, Emmy-nominated Nubi Ratto, the prolific cinematographer Aaron Tebow and Katya Andrade, my broadcast partner, Big Game Miles Jackson. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. Guys, it has been an absolute pleasure to bring you the past eight games here from Northeastern. We're back at it tomorrow at Staff uh, Asia Farina, excuse me, for the Milton Wildcats matchup against the Brockton Boxer hockey team. Join us there, 2 o'clock puck drop. For everyone here at Brockton Community Access Sports, again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, and we will see you next game.